Well, at some point in time, almost all of us have had the thought, I should start a garden. In that moment, the possibilities are endless. Beautiful flowers, those are going to line your productive vegetable garden. Birds, butterflies, they're all going to be flying around carefree. But if you're like me, however, that's never quite happened. The vegetables didn't quite make it. Flowers, they all turned into weeds. So to honor all of those ambitious but flawed gardeners out there, a new series that's all about plants. How to plant them, keep them alive, why they're so important. And this morning, we look at flowers that you can plant right now in the middle of the summer heat and how they can set the stage for your very own little habitat. Summer in South Louisiana. Even for the most experienced, it can be a pretty trying time. And not just for people, but plants as well. Yet, even in the middle of the summer, when the tomatoes are fried, your pepper plants look wilted, and your cucumber vines have been out of control for about a month now, there's still some great opportunities to work out in the garden. This time of year, uh, we all know that insects are, are running rampant right now. And uh, we could either fight them or we could utilize that to our advantage. So that's, that's what I opt for this time of year. I plant lots of things for butterflies, native bees, and other beneficial insects. That's right. It's the perfect time to make your garden a home to some of its most important visitors. And a lot of these plants are really easy to grow through the summer. And most of them, we can find native species that fit this bill really well. And a lot of these flowers require very little work. They're just very effortless, carefree, and you don't necessarily need a bed for them. You don't need any infrastructure. You just need a lot of light. A lot of sun. So if you're hoping to add a little color to your garden, don't worry. Getting these plants in the ground is a piece of cake. And once they're in the ground, it gets even easier. So these plants do take care of themselves really well, especially if you're planting right before the rain. You really won't have that much watering to do. And in fact, watering in the evening is probably one of the only ways that you'll kill these plants. And with several species that thrive here, you'll have plants of all shapes, sizes, and colors. This is another great plant. This is Mexican sunflower or Tithonia. There's a bloom. This one draws in lots of different butterflies of all different species, native bees, hummingbirds dig it. And then after this, when you get seeds from it, the birds are all over it. And buried in here, we also have milkweed. That's what's about to bloom right here. The zinnias will draw in lots of insects, utilizing the fact that Louisiana, we do build a high, high insect population through the summer. For those who may not understand why you'd want to bring in these insects, these insects can actually help with pests you don't want in the garden. And pollinators are pretty important to the whole system of agriculture. What smart gardeners are doing now is they're planning things to bring in more insects, beneficial insects, insects that'll help combat the insects that we're you know, trying to beat in the, in the vegetable garden. We also bring in lots more pollinators. With this type of gardening, we'll get a lot more native bees. All of which will thrive in South Louisiana's heat. You will plant directly into your native soil without any amending, without any fertilizer, any type of thing like that. You just need a little planting. What you want to do is um, space these out 18 inches apart. And you could stagger the next row. And you'll use the tall sunflowers in the very back because they're going to get probably like eight to 10 feet tall. A little space. This is made to fit a space about the size of a sheet of plywood, about an eight by four space. And a whole lot of sun. And voila, your very own piece of Eden. In Lafayette, I'm Daniel Phillips, KTC TV3. Now, when I was talking to Marcus, he did say that if you plant any of those flowers during a dry spell, they'll probably need a little bit of watering uh, for a couple of days anyway to, to, to get them to kind of root themselves. But once that takes place, you just let the rain take care of it. So if you've got questions on how to grow plants or if you're like me, how to keep them alive once they're actually planted, then send them my way and I'll start putting in the research and we'll keep doing this series here probably once a week.